Auburn's Hertfordshire and this is my story. So right, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Um, so I'm from St Albans, Hertfordshire, um, middle class family, nice upbringing, um, just very sporty, um, always enjoyed sports and being about. Tell us a little bit more about your, um, your family, did you have any religion when you were growing up? Um, I believed in God, didn't specifically have a, like a, a, a was tied into a religion, I was never baptised or mm -hmm. christened, but one side of my family were Catholic, mm -hmm. the other side of my family are Christian. Um, but I believed in God, but it wasn't really tied to anything like. You know what I mean? But when you were younger, did you ever go to church or anything? I went like to that? church. Like yeah, I went to church, and I was I believed in God. Like I was, it was firm. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, went to church. Went to church and that. Alright, so tell us a little bit about uh, your primary school life. Uh, what primary schools did you go to? Um, primary school went to um, Killigrew. Um, was that a local primary school? Local primary school, yeah, and then Verulam School was uh, local again. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what kind of child were you, what, what kind of things were you into when you were younger? So for me, I was, I was a football man. I was always into always my football, into football always yeah. football, um, boxing and skating as well. So skateboarding, kind of, yeah? Skate, skating, yeah, inline skating, the ramps okay. and that. So I, always, I was always very active as a child, um, mm -hmm. always very sporty and always looking for the next, kind of, the, the next move, the next buzz or just something oh. that keeps me active and that. And then obviously gym as I got older and that. Okay, so you see like when you left um, primary school, what secondary school did you go to? I went to uh, Verulam, Verulam Secondary School. Right. Is that also That's a local um, school as well? That was an, a local school, all boys school as well. Mm. All boys school. So you see when you were in secondary school, did you ever have like uh, any role models, anyone in particular that you used to look up to, you used to aspire to be like? At the time, it was probably football players, do you know what I mean? They had that, that cool lifestyle where they could pretty much do whatever they want with the money that they had. And um, they was playing football all the time, so for me that was like, you know, it was the big thing really. Was there any footballers in particular that you used to really look up to? Yeah, do you know what? Obviously David Beckham, which mm -hmm. is iconic, um, and you know, like Ryan Giggs and, and Darren Huckabee and all these guys that had these cool hairstyles as well. <laughs> so it was kind of like, as I was get, growing older and mm -hmm. getting, you know, um, more into hair, um, it kind of, that, that took its toll in that, that way. Okay, so when you left secondary school now, what kind of things were you up to? What were you doing with your life at that time? So, when I left secondary school, I went into a football academy at St Albans City. Um, and meanwhile, I was interested in, in hair, hairdressing and barbering. Um, so I kind of was cutting my friend's hair just as a hobby whilst I was at the football academy. Mm -hmm. um, and the reality is that, you know, eventually the passion for hair took over the, the, the football Seriously, um, even yeah. though you were in a football academy yeah, at yeah, that yeah. time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know why? Because what it was, was that on Saturday you had to be in like the barbershop or the hairdressers, like that was the day and it kind of outruled the football match day. Yeah. Like if I wanted to have a job, then really I had to, I had to sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. And because I was playing football midweek, it kind of allowed me to progress further in the hairdressing, so it gave me more time in the hairdressing mm -hmm. uh, and the barbering. Um, to kind of establish a nice, good bit of skill, and establish a place in that in that um, environment, um, and until I made the transfer to men's football, and it was a Saturday, yeah. I kind of had to make Choose this decision: one. like, what am I going to do? Because I've mm -hmm. got this job here now; I've got some uh, a, a relevant amount of skill, and um, what am I going to do? What am I going to turn down? Sort of thing. But what, what made you even get into like um, cutting hair and stuff like that? So. For me, it was like, obviously, as I previously mentioned, the iconic role models like David Beckham and Darren Huckabee, they always had like really cool hairstyles for footballers. And obviously I was into football and then hair as well. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of just merged together. So with that in mind, I was always very fussy with my hair when I went to the barbers. Mm -hmm. And um, them times when you go to the barber and they don't cut your hair right, <laughs> you know, it's not a very nice situation. Yeah, it's not a very nice, nice state nice. of emotion either. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that bugged me and it frustrated me to the point where actually I wanted to um, get very particular with my hair, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I had an auntie that was a hairdresser at the time. Okay. Um, it allowed me to have a little bit more freedom of expression with my own hair. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say, you know, can you keep this length here? Can you take that short there? Mm -hmm. You know, whereas you go into the barbers, man, you don't know. It was difficult for it's me difficult to express to that. that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, that's how I got a little bit more 
um, intimate with hair, if you like, and, and a bit more particular. Mm. So was there anyone like in particular that you used to um, experiment on? Um, yeah, do you know what? In fact, hair? my brother um, firstly took a small razor and he started putting a couple of lines in his own hair. And well, at home, like? Yeah, yeah at, home, at home, at home. Stuff. And then in his friend's hair. And obviously when your older brother does something like you, you tend to copy it. Mm -hmm. And so I then took the razor, um, started doing mine and then my friends. Um, and then I just I really took a liking to it. And then I started using the scissors. And so I started cutting my friend's hair just however I could, mm -hmm. um, just off my own back. And, um, and then it sort of went from there, went from a, a, a hobby to a passion. Mm -hmm. uh, so at this stage, you, so you completely cut off the football and said you're going to go into hair full time? I was still playing football because I kind of had, you know, there was Sunday football available. There was still some midweek football available. So I was still playing football. Mm -hmm. um, and even now I still play football, like if it's five a side, seven a side. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always kept that up. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of like the two different routes, really. Am I going to channel this professional or am I going to work in this environment with hairdressing? Mm -hmm. So at this stage in your life when you started getting into the hair full time, was there any other things that used to interest you other than football or was just like you kind of committed yourself to doing hair now? Yeah, pretty much committed myself to, to going down the hair avenue. Um, as my skills were progressing, it was mm -hmm. quite evident that I was you know, gaining a reputation around St Albans to being that guy who cuts hair and cuts good hair. and you know, everyone wants to go and see him and that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was building that and then I was working in London as well. So I was, you know, really putting a lot of effort and time, like a lot of effort and time into that industry. Mm -hmm. Did your family like you, like, getting into stuff like hair and stuff? Yeah, they were happy. Maybe they thought you maybe have a career in football or something like that. Yeah, sure. Now, they was, they was happy because um, I was earning some good money as well. Mm -hmm. So they was happy for them to, to see that as well, you know, mm -hmm. their young boy doing well and, 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 and you know, exceeding at something. Um, yeah. So other than the hair stuff, what kind of things were you, were you into? Um, other than the hair stuff, um, obviously football, boxing, keeping it sport related. I was into raving and stuff to be honest. I was into partying. What, um, heavily involved or? Not heavily involved, I just, I enjoyed music. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I enjoyed dancing. Do you know what I mean? Again, like well, active. You personally dancing yourself? You still yeah, like yeah, dancing yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I used to do break dancing as well, like popping and locking. I used to do that at Pineapple Studios, so it was kind of like that was the reason why I would attend the dance, not to like do any, any, anything like. So you used to go to that club and start break dancing. Yeah, as yeah. Well. I just, yeah. I mean, you no, know, no, no. you know, it was just sort of just enjoying myself at the time. What I thought was like that's the, that's my thing. You um, know, like the, the especially the world of like dancing is kind of it's like a, kind of like a culture because mm. a lot of young people surprisingly because. Even from where I'm from in London, a lot of people are into the dance and the stuff That's like that. Right. But it's like it becomes like a way of life because you see a lot of the dancers they hang around together. Yeah, it, kinda, it, it, it brings a community together. of people like together, and same as anything like barbering is a community, and, mm -hmm. and, and football is obviously a, a, a groups and stuff like that. So I got to a stage, um, you know, with hairdressing and the barbering, that I was I was making a lot of money. Um, I was making a tremendous amount of money, in fact, and it got to a point and it got to a stage where um, I just wasn't happy. I, I had enough. Like there wasn't a day that I looked in the mirror and said, "You know what? What have I achieved today that I haven't achieved like on, on, on any any other day?" Um, and it got to a point where I just I, I understood and took a, a small amount of time to reflect and just stated that I wasn't not happy mm -hmm. and I wasn't comfortable with where I was going. I didn't know where I was going. It was kind of like an endless. Um, Endless pit sort of thing. So you go like, were you, were you like suffering from depression or anything like that? Oh, just it's sad. It was sadness. Like, it was very hard to describe at the time because I would look around me and look at what I had. I had a nice car, nice flat, mm. you know, this, that, and the other. But then money there, holiday here and there, wherever I wanted. Mm. But the reality was, I wasn't really content. Like deep down, I wasn't content. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, like spiritually, I wasn't content. Mm -hmm. But materially, I was. I had what, what, what did I, whatever I wanted. So it? in, so inside, you wasn't cont you wasn't content. But outwardly, if anyone would have mm. saw you, they would have thought your life is going smooth. Internally, there was something missing for me. Mm -hmm. Even though that I could pretty much, you know, attain anything materially that I wanted. Um, so internally, there was there was like a gap mm -hmm. for me, and it got to a point where I was seeking to to fulfil it and. What I would do was I would go on another holiday, I would go to another rave, I'd go mm -hmm. to another dance and try and 
and, and, and get that feeling so like and chase to, that high. Kind of get like trying to take your away, your mind away from. Things. Basically, yeah, I would be fulfilled for a short amount of time, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously I'd be back to mm -hmm. square one. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always chasing chasing um, pleasure rather than the happiness, and not understanding that the pleasure is a limited time and the happiness is you know an eternal time. So would you say that when you were going through this period, was did you have any friends, did you have anyone around you who was noticing what you were going through? Um, not particularly, um, but there was a death uh, close by um, to someone that I know and, and it affected me personally mm -hmm. on a real deep level. How, how did it affect you? It affected me in a way that, you know, it, it really sort of, it pulled on the heartstrings and it gave me an opportunity to really reflect upon death you know it gave me a chance to ponder upon what happens next mm -hmm. because although i was trying to comfort that one person saying you know like oh don't worry everything's going to be fine there's going to be there we heaven you mm -hmm. know and that and you'll see them again mm -hmm. but the reality was i didn't at this time i didn't know it's just what i thought that mm -hmm. i believed it felt, it felt right the right it thing felt, to say. It's, what, what do you do when you don't really have knowledge upon that? You just you say what you best can mm -hmm. to try and accommodate for that person's need mm -hmm. to make them feel comfortable. But the reality was I didn't have that knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. And and when I stopped to take a minute to think, actually, I don't know. Subhanallah. So, so then, what happened in your life? So for me, I started to um, I started to seek knowledge. You know, I started to I wanted to pray for myself and for that person and. You know, and, and just so I could get some a, a clearer state of mind and understanding of, you know, what happens next. Mm -hmm. So I started to pray um, to what I thought was God, mm -hmm. just just pray to God, mm -hmm. um, in the way that I knew best. You know, I just kneel on my knees, put my hands together, and pray. Um, over a short amount of time, I felt better. I felt better for that. You know, I thought that you know things were feeling a little bit better for me. Things were going the way that I wanted, and that. Um, but then it sort of it reversed and had a a, a backtracking effect. And I was back at square one, mm -hmm. not understanding why, going out again, and you know just doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So how did you take yourself out of that state eventually? So I started seeking knowledge. Um, I started really looking at prayers specifically um, and tried to understand. And go. I went back to the religion of my father um, and, and to the church and really tried to understand and grasp. Um, how to pray and how to connect with God. Mm -hmm. um, thus learning that actually what I was praying to was maybe Jesus. Mm -hmm. And were you, were, you know like for example you said you were praying to Jesus, was it like by default or is that something because uh, it was the household that you grew up in? It was by default. Mean? I always used to wear a cross on my neck. Mm -hmm. So I was always kind of conscious of God. Mm -hmm. But then when I was told, that, you know like God and Jesus are the same and they're one. Mm -hmm. Then it, my mind started to trigger and I was, <laughs> I, was always, I was losing faith because I, was, mm -hmm. I wasn't getting anywhere and mm -hmm. it really, it, it hurt me. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like it was, it was deep. Mm -hmm. And so from there I started to seek some knowledge um, and even still it was just difficult for me to understand. But I wanted to understand so I took time out. Mm -hmm. I took, I put in some effort and care and attention. What did you start, start reading or? I started reading, reading a little bit more and then... Um, what were you reading at this time? I was reading the Bible, I was reading, you know, trying to, trying to work it out mm -hmm. from, from far back. Mm -hmm. From like outside the box yeah. kind of thing. Okay. Not only that, I was also like trying to study a spiritual way as well. Um, How and, do you mean? And, and just like what happens to the body. And, and, and how to explain a soul, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and anything kind of death related or near death related or after post death related, mm -hmm. everything like that, like spiritually, I was just trying to understand, you know, what happens to us, mm -hmm. you know, and like what is next. And because I had this, um, you know, this difficulty in, in understanding how to pray to God, but then referring to Jesus as well, then I obviously went over to the spiritual side and trying to try to really. So you were just basically just trying to find a route I was trying somehow. to find. I was trying to find. So where, where, where did you end up? Well, to be honest, I, I ended up in a difficult situation at my flat where I was, I was in subdued.
Continue whenever you feel ready, inshallah. So I was in sujood, but I didn't know it was sujood at the time. But my head was on the floor, and I was pleading for mercy. I was pleading for mercy because I didn't, I couldn't understand why I wasn't happy. I couldn't understand why that wasn't fulfilled, that wasn't content. And only till after, when I spoke to someone that was close to me about Islam, and he came to me, and he told me how he prays, and how he puts his head on the floor, and he prays to God, that I then understood that part of, part of the Islam was where I could find some peace. So then what did you do? Did you start looking to Islam at this stage in your life? So I started, um, I started looking and reading over bits about the Quran and bits about Islam and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And only from really gathering an understanding from, from the Islam was I then able to kind of piece together this puzzle that I was missing mm-hmm. internally. Mm-hmm. And from, from seeing the brotherhood so tight and, and, and visually seeing it impaired me in a way that I was, I was touched, you know. Did you feel like all this time you've been searching for something you've like actually hit on the nail? That's like, it, I was, I was literally head. felt like I, I, I connected with my Lord for the oh. first time. Oh. So when was it then you actually um, um, embraced Islam? Was it then or...? Yeah, so it was literally a few weeks later after then really trying to, um, you know, work it out and, and, and just affirming it in my own mind and my own heart. Making sure that it's the right thing. Yeah, kind of precisely, thing. because, you know, I understood God, but I didn't know too much about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his history. Okay. And for me, that was the stalling point where I was like, well, God's God. And who's the Prophet, That's basically. right. Yeah. And, 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 and do we pray to him or do we pray to God and how so does was it, it work? Was it like something like to make sure it wasn't like what you were hearing before, like before, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. and God and what yeah. have you? Okay. And that's it. Until I started learning about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm-hmm. and the fact that, you know, um, even in the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, mentions a forecoming Prophet, mm-hmm. then obviously I could affirm that. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. Now, so after embracing Islam, can you tell us, has Islam changed your life in any way, shape or form? Yeah, so Islam has given me fulfillment internally as well as externally as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't go dancing no more, I don't go raving and that. And basically it's just given me such a more positive outlook um, in terms of achievement as well. And I feel satisfied in the knowledge that, you know, um, there is hope as well. Wow. You know, after embracing Islam, how did your family... How did your family take it that now you're a Muslim? So, my family took it um, the way that I expected them to take it, sort of not very well um, at the very beginning. Um, but then, of course, that's only from lack of understanding, mm-hmm. as many other people would, mm-hmm. any, any layman would. Um, but furthermore, two years down the line, you know, the, after seeing positive changes in me and the fact that I'm you know, focused on, on my business mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and not so much going out partying and that, um, rather, I'm dedicated, and they're just seeing positives from that. Um, so at the moment, you know, everything's fine, and they're they're, they're fine with me. And how, how about some of your friends as well? How did they, you know, take it? Take so the obviously, of you Muslim? there's certain friends that I used to go raving with, um, and I don't I don't really speak to them anymore. Um, and if I do, it's just on a work level. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to drop a few friends, mm-hmm. and and to be honest, I've gained more, if not better ones too. So, um, like I say, some people, um, they didn't take it in the right way um, Mm -hmm. because they saw it, you know, as as just a a strange thing, like a new thing to them. Mm -hmm. Um, But after some time, you know, they've come back around and, 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 you know, we're friends again. So um, it's interesting to, to see how people react firstly, but then to see how much better you're doing and being. Mm-hmm. Um, 
how it really has an effect on, on, on other people as well. Mm -hmm. Allah. So, what advice have you got to Muslims and non-Muslims in regards to Islam? Cool. So, if you've experienced something similar um, and you're in a state of emotion at the moment where you're reflecting upon life, um, then I suggest that you take some consideration as to whether your mind is full or whether you're mindful. And what I mean by that is, is your mind full of material things, things that you, you want that give you temporary pleasure, or are you mindful of something that you want more, which is happiness, which is eternal. And so me, if I can give a message, is to seek knowledge and look towards Islam and look deep within yourself to really truly understand what you're here for and why you're here as well because if you're not happy and you don't know why you're living then you haven't got nothing at all so ask yourself and I challenge you as well 